I think about the potential that I have in life. Have I measured up? I think of the potential that God has for me and has called for me to do and for you. Have we reached our potential that God has for us? And so this morning as we start, end this year and begin the next, I ask the question and If you talk to two or three different people, you get two or three different titles to this sermon today because I've given each of them a different title. But basically, adding value to our life through Christ in 2023 is our goal. Reaching our potential that Jesus has for us should be our goal. What possibilities does God have for each one of us for this next year? How are we going to be able to best cultivate those possibilities that God desires for us to be? Because friends, I don't care where you at, where you think you are at spiritually, because bottom line is what we're talking about today, our spiritual relationship with God. I don't care where you think you are at, how high that you think you are, God has higher potential and possibilities for you for this year. And we must, with his help and with his presence, try to achieve those possibilities and potentials. You see, he wants us to blossom into greater things. But we as humans, oftentimes we have limited vision and we limit our possibilities. Sometimes it's the way we look at ourselves low self-esteem, or I don't have anything more to give or anything to give at all. And when we have that attitude, it lowers our ceiling, our ceiling, of what God sees and wants for us. And pretty soon we hit our head against that ceiling thinking there's nowhere place to go. And we fail to realize God's ceiling of possibilities is far greater. If you want to, if we want to achieve what God wants us to achieve, if we want to achieve our potential through him, we must value ourselves the way God values our lives. See, the problem is this. In the world, The world is based on appearance, possessions, bank accounts, and accomplishments. And when I look at the world by those standards, I'm a failure. There's people that are more accomplished, have more possessions, have larger bank accounts, have accomplished more in their jobs, have better appearances than me. And when I look at them, what happens to me is my self-esteem in myself and being able to see God's ability begins to get lowered, not because of God's values of me, but because of my value in human ideas and potentials in what he has and wants for me. It minimizes my potential for growth. It minimizes my ability to influence others. On the other hand, when I start looking at God and start understanding what he values and what he sees as potential in my life, even though I cannot understand it and I can't imagine what he sees in me, my life begins to change. Growth, Christ-centered growth, may not affect my bank account. It may not affect my standing in the world and those around me. But in my relationship with God, it begins to grow and it begins to achieve things that I've never been able to imagine before in my life. We, as believers in Christ, we need to desire what God wants in our lives 
not what the world thinks we need to have in our lives. So here's the question. How can we increase our God-centered abilities and self-image to reach his highest potential for each one of us in 2023? I know that I am not a resolution setter. I won't come to this evening as 2022 comes to an end and make out a list of things that I want to achieve in 2023. But I want to leave here this morning with a desire of seeking and allowing God to create in me his highest potential in 2023 that is possible for me and you today. So what I want to ask us to do is we're going to look at the book of Ephesians and Paul's letter there this morning. In this book, and you may want to take out a pen and pencil because we're going to look at three reasons that we are valuable to God. We're going to look at five truths to know about that value. And we're going to look at five things to do to achieve God's potential in our lives. Are you ready? We're back in school. Why are we valuable to God? You know, I talked to somebody this week on the phone and for a long time. I don't like to talk on phones for very long, and this was almost an hour phone call. But ultimately, this was the question that was coming down to, what value do I have in life? Why am I valuable to God at all? Well, number one, you are valuable to God because of who you and I are in this life. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it tells us that God made us in his very image. You know, when God created this world, he just didn't go and say, okay, I'm going to create uh, weird, off, different looking, different acting, different feeling individuals. He took time by what the Bible tells us that he created man, you and I, he created us in his very image, able to think, speak, process, grow, develop. He didn't make a robot. He made you and I in his very image. And God wouldn't make something in his image if it didn't have a value to him. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That means before the word was ever made, Think about this. It begins to blow my mind. Before this world was ever created, some 3,000 plus years ago, God knew you. God created you and me. In his mind, the process was started that in November 13, 1962, Dale was going to be born, and this is what he's going to be. I may not look like what I look like or like what I've become, but God created me in value to be in his image, to be exactly what he wanted me to be. And I had a choice. I have a choice. You have a choice. Do we accept it? And live for God and do what he's asked us to do. Do we accept it? Because this is, the end of this verse says that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Or do I say, God, why did you create me without, to, to grow up to be an old man without any hair? Why did you create me to have these aches and pains in my body? It's not fair. Or do I say, God, I don't know really what the potential is and why you have tri- took me down this path in life. But I accept it. Because I'm made in your image. And I'm made with your love. And I will grow in it to serve you. It's a choice that you and I have to make. Number two, 
You are valuable. I am valuable because of what we cost. Ephesians 1, 5 says that we are adoption as sons of Jesus to himself. Adoption is not a free thing. Adoption comes at the cost. Jesus, God says here that he paid the ultimate price for us in Ephesians 1, 6, and 7 to the praise of the glory of his grace by which we were made accepted in the beloved. In him have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. The cost that you and I have to be adopted into God's family was the giving of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. I I can't understand it. I can't understand how someone who is perfect will give a perfect son for somebody like me. I am unworthy of that gift. But friends, when we begin to accept and understand that in our life, we understand that we are valuable to God. God doesn't make junk. And God paid a high price to have a relationship with you and I today. We have value. Now, that right there, I don't know where you're at in this life of self-esteem levels of low or high or where you're at, but if you're laying in the lower qualities of self-esteem in life, that there should take you up two or three notches right there in itself. Because you have value to the God of heaven. He desires a relationship with you and I. And he loves us that much that he would give his son to die for us. We have value. I said this a few months ago. I was having some back troubles and a friend Joe here offered to help me a little bit a couple times and and we did and one of the things he told me and I don't know if I'm still doing it Joe or not I, you're going to tell me later he said one of the problems is you walk like this he said walk like a proud christian stand up straight put your shoulders back lift your head up now he was telling me from a physical standpoint right it's good for me to do that I'm telling you from a biblical standpoint, I'm a child of the king and I'm going to walk like it. You are a child of the king. We need to act like it. We need to walk like it. We need to show people that we have value in Jesus Christ. Number three, you're valuable because of what you can become. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, in him also we have obtained inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. You catch that? We should be the praise of his glory. We always talk about praising God and worshiping Him. You ever understand that as we come to Him and accept Him in His life, we are the praise of His glory? We are something that He obtains and He desires to see a purpose of a will. So we are valuable because, one, we're made in His image, two, that we are... um, the focus of his love and he has chosen us and he's given his son to us. We're vowed because we come at that cost. We are adopted into his sonship. We're adopted in his relationship with us. And so there is a, was a price that he paid for us. And we are valued because of what we can become. Not of what we are, but what we can become. Greater in him. So the second thing we need to look at then is what to know. What do we need to know about this and how do we need to do this? God has placed value on us. We need to place value in ourselves. We need to live as somebody who is of value. Christ wants to have a relationship with us. You understand that? It's kind of what the Sabbath is about, but in Ephesians 3, 17, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. 
You understand that Christ wants to dwell with you? Christ wants to be with you? Christ wants to have a relationship with you? And that relationship is grounded, as this verse says, the relationship he wants to have and that he wants to seek with us is grounded in a love relationship. It's not a this I say or this I, I tell you to do, and so if you do it, I will. No, it's a relationship that says, no matter what you are, no matter who you are, I love you and I want to have a relationship with you. Because I love you. Not because of what you do, not because of what you say, but because I love you. Now, parents here are the only ones that really understand, begin to get an inkling of what that kind of love is. Because when our children don't do, children's, children don't do what we've asked them to do, do you hate them? We don't like their action, but we love them. Probably, parents, right? We love them more. Number two, you can experience Christ's extravagant love. Ephesians 3.18 may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is width and length and depth and height of his love. Have you really experienced, can you really fathom the height, the depth, the width, the length of God's love for you? unimaginable. I referred to it a month or so ago as God's crazy love. God has a crazy love for us that is undescribable. Begin to think it, and, and then you have to think outside of that even more because it's just an extravagant, crazy love that he has for each one of us. That kind of love doesn't fade away. That kind of love... His love does not change for us, but we can appreciate and we can grasp and we can begin to return that love to him more and more each day. And it grows in that way. Number three, we can live a full and fulfilled life. We can live a full and fulfilled life. Ephesians Chapter 3, verse 19 says, To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You see, adding value in 2023 is not about adding to our bank accounts or retirement funds or buying a bigger house or a new car. Adding value to our life in 2023 is understanding and be filled with the fullness of God's presence and love for us. achieving a deeper understanding and relationship with him. And John 10, 10 says, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more. So I want to take all your things away. I don't want you to have anything in this world. I want you to just be sad and, and all that kind of stuff. No, God says he wants to have us life and have it more abundantly. And abundantly is not in stuff. Abundantly is in love and presence. Fellowship. On Sabbath, fellowship. During the week, fellowship. And what we find almost automatically works, you see it almost every time that someone's struggling in this world and struggling with things around, that they, as they understand and accept the fellowship of God's family here on this earth and experience their love, they begin to experience God's love and pretty soon life doesn't seem so bad because I'm no longer sharing my burdens on my own. But I'm sharing them with God and I'm sharing them with like believers who I know are praying for me. And I don't care what you say. Nothing changes your day like someone saying to you, I'm praying for you. That comes from fellowship. It becomes in having a life more abundantly than anything this world can give us. More than anything that we can experience. Oh, okay, four and five. God's power is not limited. And number five, God can do a great work within us. 
In Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. We limit God's ability. God's ability is not limited. You understand what I just said? I, you, put a limit on what God can do for us because we put that ceiling on ourselves. God says, I have no ceilings. My love and my ability, my power is unlimited to you. Don't limit yourself. Take the handcuffs off God. Let him pour out upon you in this next year his full possibilities, his full unlimited power to you. And again, this doesn't mean that your bank accounts can be twice the size at the end of 23 as it is today. But what it means is, is that your relationship with God will be two, three, four, five, ten times more than it is today at the end of 23 if you release God's ability to work in your life. And don't limit him. You know, too many people go to God and they say, you know, I want to do this, but. I want your help, but. Well, go there, but don't touch this. No, don't put a but or don't touch in your relationship with God. Say, God, here I am. Show me, make me, create in me your unlimited power. Let it work through me. And pretty soon, I believe that we will be doing things that we never thought were possible in our lives. Pretty soon, we're going to be seeing ourselves as having real value in our relationship with God. When we accept these truths, that we are valuable to God, and that there are things that he can do for us, and we limit his ability... great and marvelous works he will do in all of us. So, finally, what do we do? What do we do? First is discover your spiritual path and start moving in it. Ephesians 4, 1 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling of which you are called. Are you called to be a child of God? Walk, therefore, in it. What direction does he want me to walk? I didn't just give you a direction. I said walk in your relationship with God. What that means to you, what that means to me, can be completely different. But we need to walk in that relationship. I would suggest it starts with this. Spending time with him and reading his word and prayer and saying, God, what direction do you have me to go? And begin living your life in those ways. Seeking God and doing what he wants us to do affects us everything that we do. Everybody, listen carefully, everybody we come in contact with will see us as proud Christians. Not because I preached or said a word, but because the way I act, the way I share, the way I smile, the way I treat others, it will be different in this world. Agree? This world doesn't treat people with respect. If I don't know you, or I don't care for you, why do I care about you? Your spiritual path may simply be to start treating everybody you come in contact with respect, no matter how they treat you back and with love. Number two, be humbled and disciplined. This is a tough one. Ephesians 4, 2 says, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. For me, that one right here starts with God, I need patience. I'm a very impatient person. And so I first have to ask God for, for patience. 
that I can treat people with gentleness. I can be long-suffering to people. I can bear their burdens as they share them with me in whatever aspect that it is, in detail or in passing. I pay attention. When I ask somebody how they're doing, and they say, oh, fine. I don't just accept, oh, fine. I look in their eyes and say, how are you doing? Fine. I say, are you really? Kind of works that way, doesn't it? Show them you care. Love me as I attempt to love you more this year. Experience community. Ephesians 4, 3, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. That means in our church we experience a unity and a bond. We think differently. We are different people. I understand that. Not, it, not all of you are as wise as me and as smart thinking as I am. I can appreciate that. You have the right to be wrong. Or, I appreciate your point of view. I appreciate your thought. You open my eyes and light me to a different way of thinking about a Bible verse or some other topic or, or thing going on in the church. And we support each other that. And we, and, we, and we appreciate each other's opinions. And we don't look down at others and we think that, oh, that's a silly way of looking at it. It's not a silly way of looking at it. It's important to them. That's why they express their opinion that way. And we seek peace in our relationship with God and with each other. Number four. It should be number four. It just says number three, but just put number four on it. It works the same way. Uh, number four, use your unique gifts. Ephesians 4, 4, 4 and 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above and through all and in all. But we all have unique and special gifts that God has given to us. One of the things I'm encouraged about this church, and it's growing, it's not there yet, it's growing, the variety and diverseness of the gifts that God has given and the people that are willing to step up and say, I may not be able to do that fully right now, I may not understand what it means, but I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to try I'm willing to be used as God in whatever way, by God in whatever way that I can for God's church and God's service. And I appreciate that. It doesn't mean that you or I are going to do everything right. We may stumble and fall, but we're trying. And that's what's important, that we try. God has made us unique. He has given each one of us unique gifts to influence others and to add value to others' lives within our family and in our community. When we lower that ceiling too much, we limit the unique gifts that God has given each one of us. And when we limit God's gifts that he has given us, we aren't showing appreciation to, to the God who made us. The last one, it is, it just says four, it should say five. I don't know who did these. <laughs> Keep growing. Ephesians 4, 15, but speaking with truth and love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. In 2023, friends, Let's not stop growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's keep achieving. Let's keep allowing him to add value in our lives, to add value to others' lives around us. We have value because God created us, God loves us, and God has paid for us. Understand that and appreciate that. Understand that and enjoy that. 
I know that some days are harder than others, and some days it's hard to even get out of bed sometimes and face the new world or the new day, or whatever is going on. I understand that. But I firmly believe in my heart that it's God's adversary that's bringing those things in our lives. It's not him. And I know it doesn't happen in a flip of a switch. Sometimes it's a process. But I believe that as we claim God's promises, we accept his love and we take the lid off the ceiling that we put on for ourselves, that God will lift us out of those places. God will show us value in our lives that we never saw before. That at the end of 2023, when we look back, we won't say we didn't grow, but we'll say we have grown leaps and bounds and the ceiling has been lifted in our relationship with God. And this happens simply because we understand and we accept that we are a child of the King, Jesus Christ. We are bought with the price of His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's turn our hymnals to our closing song to page 468. 468.
Father God, as we start this new year, I pray that that is our theme and our thought throughout this year. We are special. We are adopted into your family. We were bought with a price. And we now become a child of the King, you and your son, Jesus. Thank you, God, for these promises and these blessings. Be with us throughout this coming year as personally and as a church to grow together each and every day and week. We ask things in your name. Amen.